Good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone had a smashing lunch. My name is Fiona Glover. I'm convener of iMouse Fort. Um, for those of you who know the basic story, you can have an after, na after lunch nap while I fill everybody in. This project started about six years ago. We were involved with St Andrews University, the Scape Sharp project, because of our very important fort. The fort in Eyemouth is the first trans-Italian fort in the UK, and the only one that nowadays you can walk around and sit down and enjoy it. Um, but after the project was with St Andrews finished, um, and we then had managed to get some money for a, a very grand posh sit-on moor, we took charge of the Fort Point and cut it, which meant that we had easy access. We also got fantastic funding and um, through St Andrews University and had super interpretation board. That meant that millions of people came. And one of the questions they always asked was, after we'd done the fort, and Jenny and I did walks and with, with Sheila, people, with people around the site, there was bits at the end, at the pointy end of the fort, that because we were so busy with the French fort, we kind of neglected them, really. And we thought, but we really want to ask, as everyone kept saying. And in the town, there was various chats, you know. Um, oh, First World War, not at all, Second World War. Oh, the Coast Guard sat up there. And there was a, there's a little tiny chamber in, built into the earth and facing out this way. And the story I was told was that was where, when it was wet, the chaps who were on looking out curried in to keep dry. The point being that it faced the wrong way totally. So there wasn't going to be an awful lot of saving of people's lives. So there was endless stories and tales. And last year um, in Glasgow, We'd been trying for ages to find out all about this. And um, as usual, HES came to the rescue and put us in touch with Danny with the SUP project. And it's been absolutely fantastic. Danny's come down, Alan came down the first time, walked around it, and they told us things that just opened our eyes up. It was like, wow, why did we not see this? Piles of stones, oh, it's just an old tree. It was so exciting, and since then, community behind us, and Danny, as I say, came down, we had a public meeting, hall was packed, and people, of course, were interested because it's like we discovered there was a barracks there for a long time, and it's all just blossomed into people remembering their great-great-great-grandfather, and it's been a real community project, and thanks to Danny, we're starting it. So I shall move on to the next bit. So you can wake up again, the others who've had a doze. This is the sharp end, as I call it, of Fort Point. And the little building standing up is actually was the Coast Guard station. Well, Lookout. And we think it, it came down about 1980, Willie, you thought, that it was demolished. And the other areas that you'll see are two cannons sticking out and a little tiny dark bit and sort of lumpy bits. And these lumpy bits were the bits that we had no idea about. Danny will fill in this wee bit for us. This, this photograph was taken, oh, as Fiona said, um, the Coast Guard station came down in the uh, uh, 1980. Uh, 1979 is the date on this. Um, it's uh, one of the former Royal Commission's aerial uh, reconnaissance photographs. And when I saw this, oh, gosh, there's a lot going on here, isn't there? Um, not least, I mean, you go up onto Fort Point now, there's uh, still you know, these, these tracks running across it. Um, I thought, you know, cause it, see, this one was significant because it's serving the Coast Guard station. Uh, the one's going straight up to uh, the guns here. And this one here, the most um, prominent one, I learned subsequently is actually where the bin wagon used to come up, <laughs> reverse up, and dump all the rubbish into the sea until quite recently. Until yeah, so, and as a diver, I found that fascinating. So I'm going <laughs> to get in down there, see, see what I can find. Um, anyway, this is a really good view of the what um, transpires to be the volunteer artillery battery uh, at, uh, at Fort Point. Um, it consists of, ooh, got to be, one back, 
There we go. Um, yeah, two, two guns uh, and magazines. Um, now, the guns... Oh, we're going to discuss the guns a wee bit later, actually, in terms of how old they actually might be. But the gun carriages themselves were uh, actually uh, reconstructed, I think, and I think, Willie, did you have a direct hand in this back in... 1973. So, so the gun carriages are, are certainly not original, but all the, all the fittings on the guns are. Uh, I could jump forward one there, Pierre. I always like including this. Um, this is actually held in the, in the British Library. Um, I was just happening to uh, you know, use, use their search facility for, for eye mouth generally, and it, it came up with this. Um, and it's a you know, slightly fanciful drawing um, from, a, from an English spy looking at the French fort. So it's always been a place where um, you're going to have you know, artillery uh, situated around. But the, the nature of the guns... Interject on that. This, this was done by Kirkcaldy of the Range, of, and, of Grange, and he actually was a bit of a turncoat. But the interesting thing was he wasn't much good of a spy because he's got King's Mount facing the wrong way. So when the army came to advance, they thought the guns were facing the other way, but actually in real life they were facing right at them. I think he probably actually drew that in a tavern somewhere <laughs> completely other and then just collected the money the next day. But as a defensive position, you can certainly see that it was sort of represented. Um, right, we're moving on to a more recent photograph now, Fiona. Yes, this is... Um This is the fort, um, this is the area that people were asking about, because from this point you can see it properly. The little bit at the top, um, the little white bit, was where they thought the soldier couried down in the rain, and this part at the side is loads of bricks, and all lying red bricks, shiny bricks, and we'd all walked past them for years and had all sorts of ideas, World War I, World War II, and it was Alan and, and, and Danny who pointed out that there was, look, there's dry, there's, there's bit at the bottom there, and, and, and this, this look at the rounded edges, and I'm thinking, I've got a dog, I've walked this for years, and never looked at this with great view, but Danny explained what, what it was, and when we looked in the little house at the end, apart from the chip paper and everything else, it's absolutely intact, hasn't changed, it's absolutely perfect. Well, the significant thing about these structures here is that they are both magazines, but from different periods. Um, this, which is built into the 16th century Italian fort uh, defences, um, is a double-lined um, locker, if you like, and it would have held black powder that would have been locked up there um, uh, for use. Uh, we believe that the, the, the cannon are original to the artillery battery uh, formed around 1860, and that the uh, later, as it transpires, magazine here, which is built of brick and concrete, uh, probably dates from both the First and Second World Wars, where they would have had mobile artillery up here. In other words, they weren't using ship's cannon uh, from the uh, early 17th century uh, in, in, in the later uh, fields of conflict. Just out of interest, there's actually um, there's a, there's, there's a, there's a concrete pillar mount here, uh, which would have had one of the uh, range finders sighting devices on it and we've got one of those or rather Fiona has got one of those sitting out on the um, Friends of the Fort uh, stand if, if, you, if you want to go and have a look at that. Right, this is have a quick look at the cannon. Now we're going to do some RTI work on the, uh, on the, on the, on the ciphers on the cannons because they're actually a wee bit decipher, uh, uh, not particularly, I would have originally assumed that they'd probably be um, William uh, the Fourth or George the Fourth period, um, given um, that the, uh, the bat battery was established uh, in the, in the, in the 1790s. Um, but in fact, it looks like a crest of, uh, in fact, George the Third. If you just press again, Fiona. Um, and we have a, a, the cipher of George III. Um, which is interesting because they are ship's cannon. It all also demonstrates the fact that you know volunteer um, units were given hand-me-downs that were probably 
100 years old, uh, you know, uh, uh, because you think about, you know, actual, actual, you know, cannon as weapon in, even in the um, mid-19th century, then they're, then they're pretty archaic. This is the map of Eyemouth, the fort, and you can see um, on the left-hand side um, how scrumptious our fort is. Um, on the right-hand side is the first showing of the barracks. Now, the barracks in that stage was initially after the building of it, not, not building, but the latterly, was also used locally in the cholera epidemic, it was used for storing grain, and just Locally, everyone knew about the old barracks, but nobody actually knew the history of it, how long it had been there, but just the fact that um, we, we, we had really found it so exciting to think we had this old barracks. The building down at the end, at the bottom, actually, Robert Burns stayed there for two nights after a sail round Eyemouth Harbour. He didn't mention how gorgeous it was, but he was there. This is now, nowadays, on the right-hand side, you can see there's a house where the barracks was, and that's the swimming pool. And the house at the end um, was built in the 1980s, was it, Willie? And um, that's, somebody had won some money, and the bungalow's there. But the main thing to look at is the wall is still there. So, uh, we... On first visiting the um, artillery battery site, I think Patrick and myself sort of said, well, you know, if you, if you have a body of, of armed men here, whether they be regulars or, um, you know, fencibles, uh, as they would otherwise know, uh, these volunteer forces, it still required a, a drill hall and, 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 and somewhere to, to, to practice. Um, now, we know Coldingham has a, has a drill hall for, for its um, or rather, we knew that Coldingham had a had drill f hall for, it, for its volunteer battery. Uh, but it, you know, it wasn't until we actually just sort of looked at the first edition ordnance survey again, and you know, we have the uh, old barracks quite plainly on the map here. And history goes on to tell us that this, this, um, yeah, uh, this is this is something that Fiona and I, we, we, we d agree to disagree on certain aspects of this, but, <laughs> but based based well, on the architecture. Here. Based on the architecture, but I'll mention that in a minute. But then the mentioning of old barracks here, you know, this is um, Ordnance Survey of um, you know, uh, 1898. And to be an old barracks then, in my mind, suggests it's certainly got to be more than 50 years old and it's got to have seen use. Um, I, I think it's probably first mentioned in, in 1801, but. Yes, and it said that there were, it, I've got a little book here, and this is why I, I, I'm still so sharing with us says here, a barracks was erected in 1803, which will hold 100 soldiers, two pieces of ordnance, 24 pounders. There are soldiers con constantly lying there, one company of sea fencibles and a full company of volunteers, commanded by Captain Renton. That's why I'm a bit... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of... You, you d <laughs> Let's just go back one. <laughs> Um, it's the fact that it's called the old barracks even at this early period. <laughs> and and ar architecturally, I think you're looking at a Georgian building that was repurposed as a barracks in 1801. But we do have some physical evidence here that we're going to be looking at as, as, as part of our collaborative project. And as, as Fiona <laughs> stated, it's actually in the seawall here. And you can see on the aerial photograph that configuration still exists um, and we're going to be uh, recording aspects of the uh, of, uh, of that uh, feature as well as the um, artillery battery site um, I, I, shall, I shall move just very briefly we found we found this well Jean and um, Jenny and Sheila found this at Cat Paxton house what you would call years ago dr drawn in the back of a fag packet in a little piece of paper and this was the plans for these gentlemen who were the Persimmons Simmons builders of the day. They built everything in eye mouth. And I think that was where that plan came from. This is the picture now. Well, it was taken then. Of The wall is still there, as you'll see. That's the old 
the, the start further along is the, is the Coast Guard house, looks fairly new, and then that's what was obviously the barracks, where we will, that bit there. This is us, the wall. That's super. Right. I took this the other day. It was actually a howling gale. It's not quite as um, bright as perhaps it might be. Um, but I think you can see straight away here um, that you've got blocked features within here. This is a reflection of the masonry of the barracks as it would have been. Um, this is the gable of the barracks wall with the coining built in here. There are several other blockings. Was it Admiral Collingwood? Ad, 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 whew, sorry, lost my teeth. Admiral Collingwood actually kept his uh, leisure dinghy here, uh, and it was probably led out to sea um, through through this blocked opening here. So that's another nice little strand. The other thing I should quickly mention is um, uh, the um, one of the people who was seeking to few uh, Robert Collin. Uh, now the pe person that supplied the old photographs of Eyemouth is actually a descendant of that original Colin. So we have a real um, sense of looking back into the community, uh, particularly with the lists of the actual serving serving men. We have, we have them in the, on our table. I know I've only got one minute, so I'll just carry on to the next bit. This bit is um, our absolutely, utterly scrumptious fort. Um, and you can see now we cut it, you can walk it. It's well signposted and at the Shortly, we will have, when we do finish our project, at the far end, that will have signs on. So when you all rush down to have a lovely time and have fish and chips and visit our port, our port you will see the signage at the end. It will all be correct and in order. A work in progress. Thank you. <laughs>